It feels like there's something in the air. This year has been spectacular for new music. I don't know if it's because all these artists have been cooped up inside their houses and have had time to focus on their music. I'm not sure. Regardless, I am ecstatic with many of the releases from this year. And a lot of these albums have meant a lot to me in 2021. It was very difficult, but I was somehow able to narrow this list down to my top 50 favorite albums of 2021. Disclaimer, I am not making this video to defend my own opinions or to tell you that my favorite albums are better than your favorite albums from this year. That's not what this is about. This video is my love letter to each artist that put their heart and soul into their music this year. And for every ounce of ambition and creativity that was showcased in all of these albums. So with that, let's get into it. Before I get going with this list, I do want to mention some EPs and projects in no particular order that didn't exactly fit onto the best albums list for this year. Papa Rod with a Papa Rod EP, Jasmine Sullivan with Hotels, Knocked Loose, A Tear in the Fabric of Life, If I Promise, Portraits of a Stranger, Thank You Scientist, Plague Accommodations, Military Gun, All Roads Lead to the Gun, Parts 1 and 2, Caro Caro Bonito, Civilization 2, Thames, If Orange Was a Place, and finally, Lena Rain with Chicory, A Colorful Tale, Original Soundtrack. Side note, this was also my favorite game of 2021, so I, of course, had to mention it here. So, you know how I said this list was difficult to narrow down? Well, I still have a list of 25 albums that didn't make it onto the list, but I still think are great and worth your time. I'm just gonna throw them up here and leave the details in the description for anyone who's curious. If there's an artist or a project that you don't recognize, give it a shot. Starting us off at number 50 is Arlo Park's debut indie pop and R&B album, Collapsed in Sunbeams. At number 49 is West Side Gun with Hitler Wears Hermes 8, Sides 1 and 2. Both sides of this are just filled with killer hip-hop tracks. Number 48 is a beautiful electronic ambient record from Lossil with his record Clara. 47 is Z Looper's first album under Danny Brown's Bruiser Brigade label, Van Gogh's Left Ear. This is a wild ride that can go from manic and unpredictable to solemn and melodic. Next is Black Midi's second record, Cavalcade. This time around, they delve into the sounds of progressive rock with some great tunes and some amazing instrumentation. At 45 is Shushu with Oh No, an album comprised entirely of duets, and there are some amazing guest appearances on here, and it was a real treat to see some of my favorite artists team up with Shushu's signature sound. Shannon Lay's album Geist is number 44, and I absolutely adore her songwriting and lyricism on this album. This is definitely some indie folk to go on a hike to. At 43 is Employed to Serve with Conquering, which blends metalcore with some melodic hardcore punk that made for some really heavy tracks that stuck with me this year. Villagers bring some extremely catchy and groovy indie folk tracks to the table on their record Fever Dreams. Next at 41 is VJ Iyer, Linda O, oh, and Taishan Sori with Uneasy. This is one of the better jazz collaborations that I heard from this year, and everyone involved has really great chemistry with one another. At number 40 is Arab Strap with As Days Get Dark. I became really enveloped in the storytelling on this album, and I really loved how the driving beats and melodies synced up with the vocals. 39 is Self Esteem with Prioritize Pleasure. Rebecca Taylor absolutely kills it with these amazing pop tunes for her debut. This album was a complete confidence booster from front to back. 38 is Dark Side with Spiral. Once again, Nicholas Jar and Dave Harrington come together for some more amazing uh, experimental electronic and ambient tracks for this record. Next is Bad Bad Not Good with Talk Memory. The Toronto band comes together once again to pull through with some really great psychedelic and explosive tracks and bonus points for having Laraji featured on the song Unfolding. At number 36, metalcore legends Converge team up with incredible gothic vocalist Chelsea Wolfe for Blood Moon 1. 
and the songs here are so intense and blood curdling and I just can't wait for what's next for this project. Number 35 is Imagine Drowning with Soundtracks for an Eternal Sleep. This is once again another dark and brooding take on ambient music for the Imagine Drowning catalog. 34 is Pink Panthress with To Hell With It. She seems to really have this knack for blending bedroom pop with drum and bass to make these really, really catchy songs that I just loved this year. This is only her debut mixtape, but I'm super excited for what's next for her. Spirit of the Beehive is next with Entertainment Death. The Philadelphia band comes together for some of their best material to date with these combinations of dream pop and psychedelic sounds that were totally infectious to me this year. Number 32 is Sao Paulo's Hussara Marsal with Delta Estacio Blues. And this is her third solo project in which she's putting out this amazing experimental music that blew my mind front to back. 31 is Mock Hami's Pray for Haiti. This is definitely my favorite Griselda release from 2021. And between his flow on each song on this record and the beats that he raps over, I was totally captivated. At number 30 is Saint Etienne with I've Been Trying to Tell You. After nearly 30 years, the band is still putting out amazing music, some of their best yet, with these amazing alternative dance pop tracks. 29 is Magdalena Bay with Mercurial World. The synth pop duo comes together for some very immediate and fun music for this album and this has definitely become the soundtrack to my cyberpunk fantasy. Next is Navy Blue with Navy's Reprise. This is Sage's third album and oh my god he does not miss I swear. The beats on this whole album are so unique and flavorful and his bars on the whole thing were just fantastic. Number 27 is Joy Crooks with her debut album Skin hailing from London Crooks puts together this gorgeous neo-soul project that details her heritage, her identity, and her heartbreak. Number 26 is Arca with Kick 4. The iconic experimental electronic artist comes out with four new albums this year, completing the five-part Kick cycle. And this was my favorite out of all of them and is honestly her best work to date in my opinion. 25 is Pan Daijing with her album Jade. This is easily my favorite album of hers so far, and the electronic soundscapes that she creates here are just so enveloping. I was I completely captivated the whole way through. Number 24 is Lorraine with Fatigue. This is her second album, and she seems to have really found a niche for herself in experimental music. Each song felt really unique, and it kept me guessing the whole way through of where it would go next. 23 is Brockhampton with Roadrunner, New Light, New Machine. Yes, the boys are back, and with A Vengeance, this whole record was just hit after hit for me. Buzz Cut, in particular, was one of my most listened to songs from this year. Number 22 is the Brooklyn experimental rock band Liars with The Apple Drop. Once again, they pull together some amazingly inventive tracks here and reinvent the sounds of post-punk and no-wave. Next is the collaboration between Ori and Helena DeLand, Hildegard, with their self-titled debut. The experimental electronic songs here sound fresh as hell. These two just have so much creativity between the both of them, they don't even know where to put it all. I am really looking forward to what's next from Hildegard. Number 20 is Black Country, New Road with For the First Time. This is the London band's debut album, and this is one of my most beloved new artists from this year. And rarely ever does a band come out of the gate so fresh and so bold, and I am really looking forward to their next album in 2022. This next album is from classical group Wild Up, led by Christopher Roundtree, with Julius Eastman, Volume 1, Feminine. If you don't know who Julius Eastman is, look up his story, but he's a minimalist composer whose work is now finally getting the appreciation that it deserves, exemplified here with this beautiful tribute to an unsung talent. 18 is Lingua Ignota with Sinner, Get Ready. Kristen Hader's signature take on classical, blended with noise music, 
has taken hold of me completely once again. I was amazed by her storytelling on this record and the really unique instrumentals. Number 17 is Yola's Stand For Myself. This is a righteous and confident display of Americana blended with soul that just kept a smile on my face the whole way through. 16, Emma Ruth Rundle, Engine of Hell. <sighs> this was a tough listen. It's very clear that these songs came from a place of deep agony and pain, which is exemplified by Rundle's intense and intimate vocals and stripped back instrumentals. Number 15 is Black Dresses with Forever In Your Heart. Sadly, the noise pop duo has since broken up, but thankfully they've graced us with this amazing collection of bombastic and mind-blowing tracks. Easily one of the most exciting debuts from 2021, Genesis Owusu's Smiling With No Teeth. Blending elements of funk and hip hop, this record is really a thrill ride of amazingly catchy tunes and songs that stuck with me the entire year. 13 is the new project from Alex Paterson of The Orb, OSS with Enter the Kettle. This is the second record on the new Orbscure label led by Paterson. The electronic and house grooves on this record show loads of promise for this new label and what's to come. On number 12, JPEG Mafia hits it out of the park again with LP. Peggy is one of the kings of experimental hip hop right now and he strengthens his craft for making beats and witty lyrics in some of his best material to date. Number 11 is Lorraine James with Reflection. James is creating these exceptional soundscapes and blending it with these amazing vocal features that add a lot to these tracks. Not often do you find electronic music with this much style and character, and she definitely blew me away with this one. Now we're breaking into the top 10, and at number 10, we have indie rock legends Deerhoof with Actually You Can. The San Francisco band has put out countless albums at this point, but the surprises and the tight songwriting still keep coming. From beginning to end, this is a really fun listen, and my favorite track would have to be Scarcity is Manufactured. At number nine is Nala Sinefro's debut album, Space 1.8. This is an experimental jazz project that blends clever improvisation, electronic synths, and field recordings that culminate into a really surreal and meditative experience. Sinefro shows exceptional potential, especially considering that she was only 22 years old when she recorded this album. I am impressed and spellbound by this record, and I can't wait to hear more from her. My favorite track is Space Six. Number eight is Spelling with The Turning Wheel. Christia Cabral invites us into her mystical world that combines her soulful voice with these amazingly constructed instrumentals. From front to back, this whole record is crisp and clear and sounds amazingly atmospheric. My favorite track here was Little Deer, such an amazing way to start the album. Seven is Hiatus Coyote with Mood Valiant. The Melbourne band's avant-garde take on R&B and soul really captivated me this year. Mood Valiant not only flows really well from track to track, but each one sounds unique and immediate and demands your attention. At the same time, it sounds incredibly smooth and to put it simply, the vibes are immaculate. My favorite song here is All the Words We Don't Say. At number six is Plebeian Grandstand with Lien Ne Soufi. In English, the album title translates to Nothing Is Enough. This is a dark record. <laughs> Hailing from France, Plebeian Grandstand combines elements of hardcore, electronic, noise, and black metal to create the most demented and mind-melting project I've heard this year. I haven't felt so numbed by an abrasive record like this since 2018 with Daughters You Won't Get What You Want. Enter at your own risk. My favorite track here was Par Maudit, or Cursed Hand in English. Okay, top five, here we go. Number five is Floating Points, Pharaoh, Sanders, and the London Symphony Orchestra with Promises. The whole piece is built around this one musical motif that repeats through the entire piece. And the way that each musician involved here stretches this motif as far as it can go 
just amazed me. I am a massive Pharaoh Sanders fan, and I certainly didn't expect a release from him this year, but I was completely enchanted by it. I was so convinced that when this album dropped, it would be my personal favorite for this year, which is a testament to how amazing this year has been for music. My favorite track on this record is Movement 4. At number four is Circuit Des Yeux with EO. Led by Haley Four, the group continues to make exciting and inventive music, and EO is their best attempt yet. It's honestly hard to pin down sound-wise. It's definitely experimental and folk-based, but the record takes so many sonic diversions that it kept me on my toes the entire time. Four's voice is so unique and gorgeous and powerful, and it took the lead on the immersive experience of this album. When I listen to EO, I feel like I'm in a museum and I'm being guided through to see each song as a work of art. My favorite track here is The Chase. Number three is the highly anticipated release from Little Sims, Sometimes I Might Be Introvert. London rapper Little Sims puts out a righteous and theatrical collection of tracks that not only flow together as a cohesive story, but each individual song is an instant hit. The pacing on this record is excellent, and the instrumentals can range from classical string sections to soul to Afrobeat, and all of these sounds blend together for an amazing musical experience that no one should miss. Favorite track here is Point and Kill. Number two is Irreversible Entanglements with Open the Gates. If you know More Mother, you know how consistent and inventive her projects have been over these past few years. And this new record with her jazz band, Irreversible Entanglements, is my favorite project of hers to date. Each member of this band deserves unyielding praise for their creativity and their earth-shattering performances on this double album. More Mother brings some of her best poetry yet to complement the band's explosive sound. And by the end of the record, I was giddy with excitement at how amazing it was. My favorite track here is Storm Came Twice. Finally, at number one, my favorite record of 2021, Injury Reserve, By the Time I Get to Phoenix. By the Time I Get to Phoenix is dedicated to member Jordan Groggs, who tragically passed away last year during the recording of this album. It would be wrong for me to sing the praises of this record without acknowledging the pain that remaining members Nathaniel Ritchie and Parker Corey must be going through. I give them my most sincere condolences for their loss. With that said, my first time listening to this record stopped me dead in my tracks. I could do nothing else but listen intently to the chaos of every song on this record because on this experimental hip-hop album, Injury Reserve shows that they are on the cutting edge of modern music. Every instrumental is instantly memorable and mind-bending with some amazing production credits, including Morgan Simpson of Black Midi. Richie and Groggs lay down flows and lyrics that are just as tenacious as the nasty musical backdrops. Songs like Superman That and Smoke Don't Clear show just how much pure creativity and talent all of these guys have, and they prove themselves to be some of the brightest minds in the music scene. My favorite song here is Knees, a gut-wrenching track that details the struggles of the members accompanied by this spacey and ethereal instrumental. This has become one of my favorite songs of all time, and the refrain of this song has carved its way into my soul. My knees hurt when I grow, and that's a tough pill to swallow because I'm not getting taller. This album was my companion for the latter part of 2021. It excited me to no end, it brought me to tears, and it kept me moving forward. By the time I get to Phoenix means the world to me, and I sincerely hope that Injury Reserve is immensely proud of what they've created. When all is said and done, when the dust settles on this decade, I believe that this record will stand tall as one of the most ambitious and important records of recent history.
rest in peace, Grogs. Regardless of what you listen to, I hope you found something that touched your heart the way that this record touched mine. Thank you for watching.